If you would like to learn how to use custom CSS to add any type of hover effect to your DV menu module links without using any plugins, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Anya and my goal here is to help you build beautiful websites. I recently shared a few CSS snippets with different animated underline hover effect for the standard DV menu module. And in this video, I would like to show you how to recreate that type of effect step by step using CSS. I will also show you how to keep that hover style visible for active menu item. So let's get to work. Here on this simple demo page, I added two standard uh, DV menu modules, and I also included one of the hover animations I shared in my previous video to this first menu module. And what we see here, that line is a CSS pseudo element. CSS pseudo elements work as if you had added a whole new HTML element into the markup rather than applying styling to existing elements. So it's not like we are adding a border to this link on hover. It is a completely separate thing, an element we can control with CSS. But to control it, we first need to add it. And to be able to add a pseudo element, we have to figure out what CSS selector we are going to use. So to do that, I'm going to open a browser inspector. And here in the HTML uh, structure, we have my row, ETPB column inside module, ETPB module, ETPB menu. So that is the container for my menu module. And inside we have inner container, one um, div for the logo image and another with our um, navigation. And here uh, we have another container, navigation, nav uh, element, and inside we have UL, an ordered list that lists all the list items. And in each list item, we have our link, A element. So the link is the thing that we want to target. We want to add that um, before pseudo element to, to the link itself. But as you can see here, it doesn't have any ID or CSS class we could use. So to target that link, we have to look at our um, parent containers and choose the parent uh, class or ID and target that link as the descendant. And I've already added my own CSS class to the menu module. I use DL menu CSS class. So I could target that link with a simple class DL menu space A, right? So link any link inside my, my DL menu container. And now I want to add that before pseudo element. So colon before. It could be as simple as defining your content property. So just to show you that uh, it works, content. And in quotes, we could add some text, right? So And now with a simple uh, one CSS property, we can see that it added that sample text here before each of that uh, links inside that container. So our selector isn't specific enough. Uh, the logo image is a link as well, and it's adding that uh, text before that uh, image. So that's not what we want. So our selector needs to be more specific. So yes, I do want to target only links within my custom CSS class DL menu. I don't want to target different menu uh, modules, just this specific one, but I, I cannot uh, target all the links inside. So here I will limit myself to links inside that uh, unordered list, which, which uses a, a class of ET menu. So here I will add another uh, parent container, which is UL with a class ET menu. And this way I've added that uh, content 
um, before each of the um, links. So that's kind of what I wanted. I won't use the text content. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment, but um, it does work here. But if you look here, it also adds that before element to my drop down menus. Okay, so how to limit that before pseudo element only to first level uh, items. And uh, we can use a right caret symbol to do that, that the right caret like this will target only direct descendants, the first level elements for that parent. So only on the first level li, so ul et menu, and then first level li, first level a, because if there is a submenu, let's look at that list item with submenu, it has another ul and then there's another list item and another a element, right? So with right caret, we are limiting uh, that to only first level links inside first level lease. So that a within this li is not first, it's the second level. So that selector only will target only the first level links and that's what we want. Okay, now the design aspect, right? So we, we not necessarily want to add any text here. So we could leave that content field empty and now we can work with that pseudo element just as it would be any HTML um, containers such as div, right? So we can specify the width, the height, the background color. It can have a border of on its own, a background image, all that. So first let's start with width and let's try with 20 pixels, for example, then height, five pixels, background, let's say, Uh, this color and we can already see it uh, added here. Now to position it anywhere we want, we can use position absolute. So if I position this absolutely, we could make the width, for example, relative to its parent. So width instead of 20 pixels, let's try 100%. Okay, and then we can use top, bottom, left and right properties to position it in a different place. So if I add property bottom zero, that is where that link ends because link would be our relative parent. If that's selected, we can see what is the size of the link. It has mm, padding, top and bottom padding, and it uh, ends where that uh, whole menu ends. And that is actually different. That padding here on that link will be different um, depending on whether we are using a logo image, what size the logo image has. So that bottom uh, value may be different depending on the structure of your menu. So let's say bottom 20 pixels looks uh, nice here. We could, as I said, uh, treat this as any uh, HTML container. It could have back background image, a gradient, anything like box shadow, all that. We can add some border radius. And we could make it a bit more um, wider than the element itself. So instead of one hundred uh, percent, we could use maybe one hundred and ten and then position it uh, by negative five percent from the top. So uh, from the left, so left negative five percent so that it's um, back in the center. OK, so this is a nice looking underline. Um, but to create that animation, we have to think uh, about what is the initial state of the line and how it looks after we hover the link. So right now the initial and the hover state are the same here. But if we hide the line for the initial state, so our before could uh, have 
opacity zero, right? And then when we hover over the link, so we need a different uh, selector. When the link is hovered, we are targeting the before with opacity one, okay? And now we can uh, force hover. Here, um, inspector uh, gives us the way to um, force the hover state so we can see how it looks. So when we hover, it will show, but it's the, the visibility gets changed instantly. To add that uh, smooth transition, we have to use the transition property. So here, transition, it's a shorthand, we can specify the timing. So 0.3 second is in out. And by default, it will transition all the properties. So now if I close that for a second, our underline appears with that um, smooth transition. But here, the initial state is not only that it's not visible, but it also has different width. So if we change that initial um, width from 110% uh, to zero, and then uh, on hover, so if we go back to my uh, the code I wrote, on hover with 110% like this. And now we have our animation. Notice how it animates from the side because the default uh, position is left zero. Uh, and here uh, we change that to left 50% we can do the same. So, so to recreate that same exact effect, we could uh, our um, before we, we've set the left negative 5% for the initial state. So that could be our uh, hover state. And first it would use left 50%. Let's see how that looks now. And now it um, transitions from from the center, right? So that's uh, one way to to do that. You can add all sorts of different CSS properties to the initial and the hover state, uh, basically changing that animation. And yes, you could add CSS animations, but that's probably topic for a separate uh, video. What I would want to show you is that you can create sort of animation just by changing that uh, transition timing function. Uh, the website I want to show you is a fun um, cubic Bezier generator that uh, allows you to um, basically create your own um, timing function. So I think I've used something like this for that uh, first effect. And you can see how it goes above the, the size it has. Like so you can play with, with these controls and then copy that cubic bezier and replace uh, your timing fun function from the standard is in, out or is in um, to that um, cubic bezier. So here for the transition, if I replace that with that custom one, now it animates a bit differently. So you could play with that to have a different type of transition without uh, using CSS animations. Mm, and uh, just to show you, if we change the size of, of that, pseudo element, it could look like a button. So back here, if that mm, height instead of uh, five, let's say it's 35, you see it could look like a button, but now it's covering the text. So we also want to make sure that the Z index is negative one. So it goes um, behind the parent container and the link, our parent that our line is relative to, has to have a Z index of uh, one. So let's let's just um, use that selector. Okay, so 
So just like that. And now we, if that would be a button, it could have more padding, right? We could um, rotate, transform that uh, on, on hover, change that bottom position so that it's further down and then goes up uh, when we hover, like basically play with the initial and the hover state. So with that size, it would look like this, right? So there's, like I said, all sorts of different things you can uh, do with that. Let's stick with the um, line for a moment. But I promised to also show you how to apply that effect to current active menu item. In WordPress, our current page uh, item has additional CSS classes we can use. So that uh, demo link is actually it links to the page that the demo is uh, here. So so this would be my active um, item. And as you can see, it has additional CSS classes, like all the leads have the standard ETPB menu page with ID, menu item, menu item type custom, all these different CSS classes. But here we also have a new ones with current menu item, uh, current page item. So I think the current menu item is the one I would uh, stick with. Mm, so let me just copy that current menu item. And now uh, in my mm, in this uh, temporary inspector style sheet that includes all the customizations I've made so far, we can add that uh, new selector and we want to display hovered state on that uh, CSS class uh, link. So that was that was my class just for so I don't lose it. But for the hover state, it would look like this. But also if my link is inside that parent container. So here we could uh, add a second um, selector. So with a comma, a second target to that selector. So second target would be uh, Lee with a class current menu item. And it doesn't need to be on hover. OK, so for that, we could use uh, this. And now it is um, working for the current menu item. We could uh, take it one step further, change the color for the current menu item, and then the hover color would be different and basically play, play with that uh, further. But I just wanted to give you a starting point, explain how to target and add that pseudo element. And hopefully you can take it from there and play with different CSS properties to create something unique you can be proud of. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Do let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy learning CSS with me, I would like to invite you to join me inside the five day CSS and DV challenge I am hosting soon. It's a free five day event with daily video lessons and live Q and A's where I'm teaching you the basics of CSS and how it connects with DV specifically so that you can easily target any element on your site and use the inspector to edit and troubleshoot your CSS, just like I did today in this video. I hope to see you there. You'll find all the details in the video description below. Bye for now.